Good evening everyone, welcome to tonight's live stream. Uh, the goal of this live stream is to review for myself the doctrines. The reason I'm doing this is because in Matthew 13, Jesus says that those who don't understand the doctrines will be swept away or taken away by the enemy. So the best way to understand or review the doctrines for me is to teach it and if other people are watching and want to review then it uh, can be benefit also to them so before we start let us pray our father in heaven be merciful to us forgive us from our sins please send the holy spirit to study with us so that we can understand your word bless those who are listening and watching thank you for hearing our prayers in jesus name we pray amen Okay, our topic is born to live forever, repentance and the new birth. You know, these days, uh, there are so much earthquakes and calamities that there are so many other people who want to save the lives of other people. And they risk their own lives just to save other people, you see? because people want to survive nobody wants to die and people want to save you even if you are in a, if you are in such a situation many people want to save you okay sorry about that so there uh, but you know we will all die someday why because romans 6:23 says for the wages of sin is death so sin is deadly more deadly than the calamities you see isaiah 59 2 says your iniquities or sins have separated you from god and god is the source of all life because god is life so when we are separated from god then we naturally are going to die if God doesn't help us so because of sins we are going to die and sin separates us from die therefore from God therefore God uh, because God is life the source of all life then we are going to die without God we cannot live forever by our own selves Romans 5 12 says therefore just as though one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned of course adam was be, uh, became a sinner therefore the children also inherited the tendency fallen tendency romans 3 23 says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god there is none righteous no not one there is none who understand there is none that seeks after god they have all turned aside there is none who does good no not one according to romans 3 10 to 12 therefore all of us need salvation because all have sinned everybody who is a son of adam and eve uh, needs salvation ephesians 2 8 Fortunately, and verse 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is not by our own works. It is the gift of God, not of works, it says, lest anyone should boast. Thankfully, the Bible does not 
uh, tell us only our condition that all have sinned, but it gives also a solution. You know that verse was, John 3.16 was uh, told by Jesus to Nicodemus. And there is a solution to our uh, problem. You have to understand the problem correctly. What happened, what is the history, and the solution, you can understand it properly also in the context. So, salvation is a free gift. It's not something you work for or you uh, do penance for. Biblically, it is a free gift because we cannot pay the penalty of sin. It's not, uh, salvation is not something you pay with tithe or offering. No, it is free gift. Ephesians 2.8, it says it is the gift of God. You don't pay for gifts. You don't pay for gifts. You just give tithe and offering because uh, it is God's. You return the tithe and offering according to Malachi 3.10. So, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So, poor or rich, we can all be saved if we just accept the gift. It cannot uh, be paid for. And it doesn't need to be paid for. We just need to ask for forgiveness. So, why does God, why is God concerned about us? Why didn't he just uh, forget us in this little world of ours? Since he has many worlds anyway, and he can just create new worlds. It is because God is love. First John for eight. God is love. God doesn't want to let to uh, no, to let us just disappear. Like you know, if you are par a parent, you cannot just let your baby or uh, when he is sick or she is sick, you cannot just leave it to suffer alone. You want your baby or your children to have good health. That is what God is feeling when we have sinned and when we are dying in our sin. The Lord is long-suffering toward us. He doesn't want to abandon us. He doesn't want to abandon humanity because the Lord is long-suffering toward us. 2 Peter 3.9 Furthermore, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why is God very long-suffering? He is waiting for you and me, my friend, to repent. Let us repent. Exodus 34, 6 and 7 says, The Lord God, uh, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and by no means clearing the guilty so god is long suffering he waits for us to repent but if we don't repent he will not clear us so we have to all we have to do is repent and come to him and he will forgive us you know god cannot excuse sin but he loves the sinner but he hates the sin. So it has to be separate. Okay. How do we understand both mercy and grace and justice and fairness? That is the question. Many people get confused. Now let's look into the Bible to see how we can understand. No earthly government says that we love you. There are no more law. <laughs> there is always a law. When God's law is broken, there has to be a penalty and there is always justice. Justice is because there is law. And because there is law and there is justice, then also there can be forgiveness. Otherwise, if you don't have law, then no need for grace, no need for salvation. Okay, It has to be there. Everything can be understood and not necessarily contradicting each other. <clears throat> 
So, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whoever believes in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus did not sin, but He died. We sinned, we are supposed to die forever, but because Jesus died, we, he was our substitute. And because He is unlimited, He is God. He can forgive us from all our sins. He took the punishment of eternal death onto Himself. So that when we die, He can raise us up back to life. And everything is still just. The law is perfect. Justice is served. And redemption is there. Wow. So only Jesus can save us. <clears throat> Romans 5 19 says for us by one man's disobedience many were made sinners who is that one man it is adam everybody from adam became sinners so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous who is that one man jesus christ jesus christ obedience perfect obedience perfect life Many will become righteous. Jesus Christ's righteousness will be credited to us when we repent, when we submit to Jesus Christ, when we uh, accept His free gift of salvation. Wow! This is a miracle and there is no other choice that you can understand in this whole world to solve that problem. 1 Peter 2.22 Who committed no sin nor was deceit found in his mouth. Jesus Christ never sinned. Jesus Christ never lied. First John 29, The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Wow! So the reason there was in the Old Testament so many lambs since Adam sinned, it is a symbol of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who is the true one who takes away the sins of the world so when jesus died we did they did not need to offer lambs anymore because jesus christ fulfilled that symbolism okay <clears throat> matthew 27 46 jesus said my god my god why have you forsaken me why because sin all of our sins were put on jesus christ and because of all of that sin, he was separated from his father, from God the Father. Mark 15, 31 said, he saved others himself. He cannot save. That was the crowd shouting to Jesus. But that is true. He could not save himself and also save us. If Jesus Christ saved himself, then we were doomed. But since he did not save himself, he could save us. That is how it works. <clears throat> that is the only way God could give us eternal life and still be just. Salvation is not about anything good that we have done, but about what God did through Jesus. Ephesians 2.8 again, For by grace have you been saved. You have been saved through faith. So, there is something for us to do, not something, you know, to do activity. It is we must believe and accept the amazing gift of salvation. <clears throat> Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So what does believe mean? Huh? It's not only intellectual, okay, I believe Jesus Christ existed. No, it is more deeper than that. Why? Because James 2.19 says, even the demons believe and tremble, but they don't obey. Huh? So Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your our paths. So believing or trusting in Jesus Christ means that we surrender our hearts our minds and our ways to him it means that believing is not what we can do to save us but what christ did 
on Calvary. It also means that recognizing that we are hopelessly lost unless God saves us by a miracle of Jesus Christ. So, the question, Acts 6.13, like this uh, prisoner, uh, prison guard, he said, what must I do to be saved? Isn't that your question, my friend? Do you want to be saved? You see, we have the same question. What must I do to be saved? Acts 16.30. And there are four answers, steps, or truths. First, salvation is a free gift. Remember, salvation is the free gift. Anybody who asks for payment for salvation is not telling what the Bible says. They are just doing fundraising. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest anyone should boast. Why do we not deserve salvation? Because... Number two, truth. All have sinned. Where is that from? Of course, in the Bible. There is no idea that we are going to teach you that's not in the Bible. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, we don't deserve salvation. We cannot do anything that we can earn salvation. So what is the problem? The problem is all have sinned. Therefore, the wages of sin is death. We are going to die someday. We are going to die someday because we have sin in us. But there is a solution. There is a solution. The solution is number four, truth. The solution is in Romans 5.8. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Imagine, we are still sinners. We don't care. But Christ is suffering and died for us. Oh, what kind of love is this? So it is a free gift of salvation. All of us have sinned. Sin makes us die. But Jesus died in our place so that we can have eternal life if we accept his solution. His solution. So, why would you not accept God's solution? There is no explanation why you would not accept God's solution. So, what does it mean that accepting God's solution, accepting Jesus as our Savior? That's a good question, yeah? How much, how can we receive the free gift of salvation? <clears throat> Romans 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So Jesus is uh, knocking on our hearts and asking that we will, that he will come in. Are we going to uh, let Jesus Christ come into our hearts or are we going to ignore him? Of course, we have to open the door of our hearts and let him come into our lives. That is how we receive the free gift of salvation. This is how what happens. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit brings truth as you have heard and you have read in the bible and you have heard other preachers and conviction to our hearts that we are sinners and instead of resisting it because sometimes we want to we don't want to surrender our sins we should allow our proud hearts to be humbled we should recognize our need because there is no other way we cannot do anything and we simply invite Jesus to do what he does best. We can say, thank you, Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Forgive my past. God can forgive our past. <clears throat> and take control of my future. And then Jesus becomes not only our personal savior. He becomes our Lord and master. And our best friend. <clears throat> First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins... Listen, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I have to read that again. Have you killed somebody or do, did so much bad and evil things, lied, cheated, used, pirated, etc., etc.? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins, not only my sins, your sins, our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 6, uh, 1 John 6.1.9 9. 
So, <clears throat> no matter what we did in the past, Romans 4.21 said, What He has promised, He was able to perform. God can really forgive all our sins, my friend. John 1.12 says, But as many, as many, as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God. Wow! <coughs> to those who believe, believe in His name. So, very nice we can make mistakes but god can forgive us no longer are we the children of darkness we are now walking in the in light <clears throat> every day we choose to believe god and god saves us from sin first john 5 12 and 13. he who has the son of life he who has not he who does oh let me read again he who has the son has life he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So, Jesus Christ is the most important. As long as we have Him, we have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Wow! Eternal life! Even if we don't have money, eternal life is worth more than all the riches of Steve Jobs, of Bill Gates, of... Uh, Tesla guy or Facebook guy <clears throat> that doesn't matter it's not eternal but God wants to give us something more important more valuable than anything else in this life we can ever have Eter eternal life <clears throat> John 3 16 says whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life that means including me and you whoever believes in Jesus Christ so, people want to save other people and they risk their lives. Some people, some firemen even lose their lives saving, trying to save pregnant women or other uh, people. Like this guy, he died. Yeah? Trying to save somebody's life. So, that is what Jesus Christ did for us. He died on the cross to save us because we have no other choice of being restored to eternal life. And that is the end of our presentation. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the opportunity to be forgiven of all our sins. Please forgive us from our sins and give us wisdom and understanding to live like you, Lord. We have no choice and we have no hope without you. We totally depend on you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Send the Holy Spirit to guide our decisions, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.